Hey fourth graders, it's Mrs. Seals back for our next science lab. So we finished up our unit on what we call physical science, which is when we were talking about properties of matter, energy, and force and motion. And now we are beginning something new in science. So for the next couple of months, we're gonna be doing what we call earth science. So we're going to be talking about natural resources, and things like weather and space, the moon, natural patterns that we can observe, all of those sorts of things are included in earth science. So we're gonna start out today by talking about soil. And your uh, target says, I can examine properties of soil. So hopefully remember, because um, you've talked about soil in kindergarten, first grade, I think in third grade, um, soil is just dirt. But when we're talking about it in science, we call it soil. And a lot of times we just think, oh, it's just dirt. It's not important. But soil is actually very, very, very important because without soil, plants and trees cannot grow. And if plants and trees cannot grow, then we do not have clean air to breathe and food to eat. Also, many um, animals and insects make their home in the soil as well. So soil is very important. So soil is a mixture made up of a lot of different things. Here are some things you can find in soil. Tiny pieces of rock, minerals, decayed plant and animal matter, which we call humus. Um, the, these are things that were once living, they're no, no longer living, so you might find things like dead leaves, grass, roots, um, different parts of plants. You might find um, dead worms or dead bugs or parts of dead bugs. All those things are what we call decayed plant and animal matter. And you might be saying, ew, gross, but those are the things that help make very healthy, rich soil that um, are really good for plants and trees. Soil also has water and air. So today we're going to be looking at five types of soil. The kids that are here in class are going to be rotating through five different stations. Each station will have a different type of soil and they're going to be observing the soil with the hand lens and then filling out a little graphic organizer telling me um, the color of the soil, the particle size, which means how big the pieces are, the texture, so they're going to be touching it and feeling it, and they'll be drawing a picture of it. Next week, we're going to be talking about another property of soil, which is called the capacity to retain water. So we'll be doing an experiment with these same five types of soil to see which one does the best job of holding in water. And we'll kind of talk about that today too. So one type of soil we're gonna look at is called clay soil. And I'm gonna go into more detail about each of these in just a second. We're gonna be looking at silt, sand, loam, and gravel. So let's talk about clay soil. Here's a picture of clay soil. Hopefully you notice that clay soil is a reddish brown color. Um, the particles of clay soil are very, very tiny. They're almost dust-like. You may be thinking, but Ms. Seals, those pieces look very, very large. Those are actually clumps of clay soil. So clay soil, when it's dry, it's very soft and powdery. Again, like I said, it's almost like a dust, but then when it gets wet, it's very thick and sticky, like clay that you are familiar with to build things. So when clay soil gets wet, it gets very thick and sticky and you can kind of mold it into different shapes. Some people make pottery out of clay soil, like bowls or plates or dishes. Some cultures even, um, excuse me, some cultures even build houses out of clay soil. And so these large pieces that you're seeing here, those are pieces of clay soil that have been, that got wet and then they dried and clumped together. So you could break those apart and you would notice that it's almost like a powder or a dust. I have some clay soil here. Let me stop sharing for a minute. 
I'll come back to that. I have some clay soil right here. And I this is also kind of clumped together, but you'll notice here, let's see if you can see that, that I can break these clumps apart. And you can notice, see all the little tiny powdery pieces? That's Those are the particles of the clay soil, almost like a dust or a powder, okay? So those are important properties for you to know about clay soil, that it is um, reddish brown, tiny, tiny particles, soft and powdery when dry, thick and sticky when wet. Cl clay soil is not great for most plants. Um, clay soil by itself. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, because since it gets thick and sticky when it's wet, it almost holds in or retains too much water for most plants. Um, plants need a good, most plants need a good combination of just the right amount of water being held in, not too much, not too little, and the right amount of airflow. Again, not too much, not too little. So you have to find soil that's kind of a combination of all of those things for most plants. However, there are some plants that have adapted to be able to survive in clay soil. Plants that need a lot of water do well in clay soil. Um, plants that grow near kind of swamps or marshes um, and they require a lot of water, they can survive just fine in clay soil. Most plants, um, clay soil is too much water and they'll actually, the plants will, will not survive because they'll have too much water. All right, so the next one is silt. So it looks like this. Silt is found next to rivers and creeks. It's kind of this light grayish brown color. It has what we call medium sized particles. Um, when it's dry, it's very soft. And when it gets wet, it's very slippery. So here is some um, silt that I have right here. I actually went to the creek and collected it myself. Um, when it dries, it also kind of clumps together, but when it, um, it's not as thick and sticky as the clay, so you can't really build with it or anything like that, okay? Um, silt by itself is okay at growing plants. Um, it doesn't retain as much water as the clay. Um, it's pretty good, but we'll talk about an even better one in just a second. The next one is sand. There's a picture of sand. Sand is a light brownish tan color. Um, sand has large particles. I know you might be thinking, Ms. Seals, sand is not large, but when we're talking about in terms of soil particles compared to the other types of soil, um, sand particles are large especially compared to the um, silt and the clay. And it has a kind of a grainy rough texture. Um, sand is also not great at growing most plants because since the particles are so large and so spread out from each other, it, does, it tends to not hold in enough water, okay? Um, so again, there are plants that have adapted to live in the sand and not need a whole bunch of water, such as plants that live in the desert, okay? Um, so that's sand. So the next time I want to the next kind I want to talk about is called loam. And loam looks like this. It's a dark brown, almost black color. And loam is actually a combination of clay soil, silt, and sand. And loam is the best type of soil for growing most plants. The reason that loam is the best type of soil for growing most plants is because it combines the clay, sand, and silt. So you get kind of all the positive parts of all of those. Like we said, the clay holds in too much water. The sand doesn't hold in enough. But when you combine those and also with the silt, you get the perfect combination of holding in just the right amount of water so that plants don't drown, but plants still get the water they need. Um, also, the, the amount of airflow that can go through it is also just right for most plants. 
So it's a dark brownish black color. It's a mixture of particle sizes, depending on if your loam is more sandy or more um, clay and that sort of thing. And it has a softer texture. If you decide that you wanna plant, you know, flowers or plants at your house, and you go to Walmart or HEB and you buy the big bag of potting soil, you are buying loam, okay? And I have some here, loam, but this loam is actually from a bag. So you will see these white kind of chunks in it. That's um, stuff that's been added to it. That's called fertilizer. It's basically like extra vitamins and nutrients for the plant. Um, when you find loam, like in your backyard or something, it won't have that in there. That was added in there into the potting soil that you buy in a bag to make it extra healthy. Loam has a lot of what we call humus, which is what I talked about at the beginning. That's the decayed plant and animal matter. So in loam, you will find things like leaves, grass, roots, sticks, maybe even some um, dead worms or bugs or even living worms or bugs, okay? So if you buy it in a bag from Walmart, you probably won't see any bugs or things like that. But if you go out into your backyard and dig up some soil, um, the, the soil we have around here is loam. It's, it's like clay, more heavy on the clay loam. Um, and you definitely will find bugs and worms and things like that. Okay, and then the last one is called gravel and gravel is just pieces of rock. Um, it's a gray or brown color, depending on the type of rock that the, these smaller rocks broke off of. This has the largest particles out of any of these types of soil and it feels just like hard rocks. Gravel is not very good for growing most plants. It lets way too much water through. So the plants tend to not get enough water. Again, there are some plants that have adapted to be able to um, survive with very little water, but typically we do not use gravel for growing plants, but you'll definitely find gravel in the soil. All right, so those are the five types of soil. And um, like I told you next week, we're gonna be talking about these same types of soil, but we're gonna be talking about another property called the capacity to retain water. So we'll be seeing how much water each of these types of soils um, retains or holds in. And we'll be talking more about um, which ones we use for plants and things like that. So. Um, I apologize, this really isn't an experiment or anything you can do at home unless you have soil in your backyard and you have permission to maybe go and dig some up. You can look through it and see what kinds of things you can find. Um, remember, there is a short quiz after this video for you to um, see what you know about these types of soil. All right, hope you had fun learning about soil and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.